In the last module, we learned about standard output. In this module, we learn about the mirror to that standard input. We saw in the previous diagram that programs can take input. In this module, we'll examine what that means. The first thing to note is that not many programs take input. If, after starting the program, which means if, after pressing enter on the shell command line, it is then necessary at some point, at any point during the running of that program, before that program terminates, if it's necessary for you to type something, anything, on the keyboard, then it can be said that the program takes input. So if you try to remove a file and you use the minus I option and it asks you yes or no for a given file, then that yes or no that you type in is input to the program. By default, a program's input comes from the keyboard. In other words, you have to type it. It is, however, possible to cause any program to take its input from one of one of two other places. And similarly to output, those two places are one, a file. In other words, you can get the input from any program to come from a file. You can also get the input to come from another program. Now that is the example that we saw in the previous chapter. We sent the output of the WHO program to the WC program. That WC program used that output as input, which implies, of course, that the WC program is a program that can take input, which in turn implies that if we didn't use the pipe symbol to feed the output of the WHO command into the input of the WC command, then we could have got the input from the w for the WC command from the keyboard. If you have no idea what I'm talking about or what that could possibly look like, I'll give you a demonstration. Now we can see uh, the results of the WC command there. WC has been fed its input using the pipe symbol from the WHO command, but what if we just type WC by itself? and press enter. What will it do? Well, it just sits there. It's sitting there just waiting. What's it waiting for? Well, interestingly, it's waiting for input. Where's that input going to come from? Well, it's too late to get it from another program because we've already started WC and we didn't use it with the pipe command on the command line. So the input has to come from the keyboard. So I guess I should just start typing. And I'm just typing random words and, and letters here. And then I press enter. Hmm. The WC program is still waiting for input, so I'll type some more. And some more. And some more. And it keeps on eating the input as long as I want to type it. This is what WC does. In fact, this is what an entire family of programs does if you don't feed them input from another program or from a file. They take it from the keyboard. So let's assume that I finish typing. Let's assume that I say to myself, all right, I don't wish to feed any more input to the WC program anymore. How do I tell the WC program that that's all the input that I'm willing to type? Well, I'll give you a clue. It's the same. It's exactly the same way that we tell the shell that we have no more to type. Remember, when we log out from the shell, we could use the exit command, but there's another way that we can log out. One particular keystroke combination is the keystroke combination that means I have completely finished typing. I, I wish to type no further into this program. Can you remember what it was? It's the control D keystroke combination. Control D doesn't just work with the shell, it works with any program of this nature. So I'll press Control D now, and that should end the input. What do you think the WC program will do once I've finished all my typing? Well, what does the WC program do? It's a word counting program. Hmm. With that in mind, I'll now type Control D. And the WC program produces for me 4, 17, 117. 
which I interpret as meaning four lines, 17 words, and 117 characters. If you're really bored, you can go and verify that. I showed you that particular set of techniques, not because I wanted you to get some practice using the WC command with input from the keyboard, because nobody ever does that, but because I wanted you to see the typical function of this sort of program. WC is an example of a filter. And we're going to be looking at filters very shortly. Every filter behaves the same way, every single one. If they don't get input from another command, or if they don't get input from a file, then they read their input from the keyboard until you type Control D, at which point they produce their output and terminate. So now that you've seen how to feed in input into a program via the keyboard, let's have a look at how to feed input to a program from a file. Incidentally, you've already seen, of course, how to input information into a program from another program. That's the pipe symbol. Anyway, now from a file, we use the less than symbol. For example, wc less than file where file is the name of some file. Now, can you guess what WC will do in this particular instance? Well, I'd say it's a pretty safe bet that WC will count the number of lines, words, and characters in the file. Let's have a look at that in action. Okay, there's a set of files in my directory. I will now run WC and I'll feed it as input sample.html and I learn that there are 111 lines, 472 words, and 6,000 odd characters. Now it's interesting to note that there is another subtly different but very similar way of feeding information from a file into the WC or any other similar type of program. I could do it like this WC space sample.html and this is almost but not entirely the same thing. I'll first prove to you that it does the same thing, that we effectively have the same result. And as you can see, that's true. Well, we have almost the same result. The words sample.html have been added to the output, interestingly. The reason that they're not the same thing is very subtle and somewhat difficult to explain, but I'll have a go at it. In the first of those two examples, WC takes no arguments, none you might think, oh yes, hang on, there are two arguments. One is the less than sign, and the other one is sample.html. Those are both arguments to WC, aren't they? No, they're not. The less than sign is first interpreted by the shell. The shell looks at that command line, spots the less than sign in the middle of that command line, and says, aha, I'm going to run the WC command with no arguments, but I'm going to feed it the contents of the file called sample.html. So effectively, the WC program is running with no arguments. But instead of us having to type in stuff from the keyboard, the information to be counted comes from the file called sample.html, and it's the shell that feeds that information to the WC program. Now, compare that with the second example there, where there is indeed this time one argument to the WC program, and that is sample.html. The shell doesn't really get involved in this at all. It's all up to WC. The WC program says, aha, I have one argument on my command line. I'll interpret that as the name of the file, open up that file, and count the lines therein. So we end up with a similar result, but it's actually two subtly different things.